Color It came out with a new pencil set and they sent me it. I really wanted to present a picture that was really good for them. I've had their pencils in the past and I've liked their pencils. They are black barrel and I'm not normally a fan of black barrel, but when I did test the Color It pencils, they were okay. So now they came out with their 72 set. I was really very excited when I got it. From what I remember from the first set, I got the 48. And it came with one of these cases, and I love their cases. A travel case. Comes with a pencil sharpener. And this one came with 72 pencils. They're, they're a shiny black barrel, and they have the name of the pencil, color it, and then the number on it. So these were basically the same as the ones that they had in the 48. I knew what to expect, and I did good coloring with them in the past. So what was better than coloring in a Color It book using Color It pencils? And I picked out this picture. This picture is the Color It version of it. This came out of their book. But I made a last minute decision at the end to make a copy of this onto my regular paper. This picture that came from their sweets book don't have anymore. It's out of stock. And I don't know if they're going to be getting it in or not again. So this is my favorite book. It's never disappointed me in the past. It's the only book I own where I've actually done like half the pictures in the book. That's how much I like it. So when I saw this for Valentine's Day, which was yesterday, I was really like, this is the perfect picture for Valentine's Day. And I made a copy of it. Well, I had been having trouble. I've been having trouble for the last couple of pictures that I've done, and I haven't really showed it to you. It started when I ran out of paper, and my father went out to the store and got me my exact Bristol Vellum, which is the brand I use by Nene. And I've been using this probably over two years now because my primary uh, paper, which was the Georgia Pacific, that was sold by Walmart, they stopped making. Broke my heart. So back then, I went on this big search, and I bought so many packs of paper, and I finally found the exact vellum Bristol, and I was totally happy with it. Now, this one is the 67 pound, 250, 8x5 by 11, yada yada. Okay? I had run out of the ones that I had, so my father got me a few packages from a local store off his depot. It came in a different packaging, but it said it was the same thing. So it's the exact vellum Bristol and it's what I use. So I was like, okay, no big deal. It, they came in a new package. People, uh, Companies switch up their packaging all the time. But when I started using this, it wasn't the same. And I got really upset. I was like, dang, I have to go on a hunt for a new, new paper. Finally went on to Amazon because I had a, a larger choice on Amazon and I bought a whole bunch of them and some of them were really good and some of them were not so good, which we'll show you in another video. But I ordered totally by accident this paper. This is another Nini paper. And when I got it in the mail, I was surprised that it said... Exact White Villain Br Bristol. This is the same paper as the one that I just bought, but it's in, a, in the old packaging. It's the same paper. I'm going to hold off opening it. And I print it out on the other paper. Well, I didn't pay enough attention to it. And I started to color. And what I got with the other paper was in 24 hours, these little hair-like markings showed up on it and it didn't matter what pencil I used. I used my Prismacolor. I used Starjoy. I used Color It. No matter what I did, these little marks came up. And when I started doing this, it was very obvious. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? The first thing I thought about was I need a coating on it. So I tried the brush and pencil fixative. Now, this is a textured fixative, which is different than a final fixative. The textured fixative adds a little bit more texture to the paper. 
Now, this has its good and bad points. Yes, you will get more texture on your paper if you are using a cheaper paper. But it does give a little bit of film that I don't normally like. It comes off really easy, but I have to redo everywhere that this touches. So I don't use it all that often because I'm usually using paper that I like and I don't need to. Got to this point with this with my picture where it was probably about a quarter or halfway done with the bottom portion. I sprayed this texture on the paper and that seemed to help a little, but not enough. So I was about to rip up the paper and it was after hours of working on a picture. You really, you put your soul into it and you really want to continue. This is not a hard picture. I should have been able to do this one very easily in an evening of coloring. That's when I discovered what the problem was. And this is something that everybody needs to know. This is labeled Vellum Bristol. This is labeled exact vellum bristol but they are not the same paper because in the very 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 fine print i saw this and it's not something i would normally even read because it's really tiny semi smooth finish this is the vellum bristol that you don't want to use this is the vellum bristol that you do want to use so Unfortunately, I was more than halfway done with the picture and I didn't want to turn back and I did not use this paper for it. But I am pointing it out to you that if you are printing your paper and you're using the Nene paper, there are two vellum bristles. And if you look on the bo bottom, there is no small print on it that says semi-smooth. When I tried this out later on, I got the same smooth finish that I always got. And I am back to my old way of coloring. Thank goodness. Using the textured fi fixative was one way that I was able to fix my paper a little bit and make it a little bit better. You can get this in the Krylon. It's not a textured fi fixative, but it is a workable fixative and I really find that the workable fixative does a better job I just didn't have it anymore on what I use it for sometimes is when I do a bottom layer or a like the bottom and I want those colors to stay where they are I don't want to mix them with the top colors if you add that mi middle ground uh fixative to the paper the pencil will stay to the paper it will not mix with the next layer and you can go on to putting more layers on top and some of those layers will be detailed layers. So you don't want to mix those layers with your blending layers or your bottom layers. So that's how I fix this. Unfortunately, it didn't help me with the picture because I couldn't do a background. The background would have come out disgusting. I was able to do the top and I used a couple of tricks when I was using because this was bad paper. I did use markers on the roses and I started adding in some other things, some embellishments, some gold, and that just, I mixed media it. Once I mixed media it, it was okay. Then at the very end, I used my Krylon high gloss, which worked really nice and I was happy but I had no background on this picture what do I do with it so I decided to cut it out and I put it on my husband's Valentine's Day gift box I used to use a little bit of Mod Podge and it came out beautiful added some ribbon put the gift in which I'm not telling anybody when I got them no 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 the gift came out great so those are three different ways that you could fix something use a uh, fixative, use marker, and if worse comes to worse, use the elements on the page, whatever came out good, as something else, and use embellishments. So with that, I will start my demo. Mm -hmm.